What it do, fam? It's your man, Shawnee Mo, sitting here in the lab, chilling, not really chilling, working my butt off. Um, as you can see, I got the station all fired up behind me. Um, if you want, you can go check it out, WSMCRadio.com. Just click on one of the players. We got music streaming 24 hours, seven days a week, um, getting ready to get shows together and stuff like that. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Right now, this is probably a video that um, I've been wanting to do and have needed to do for a minute. Um, if you follow me on YouTube, um, if you follow me on Facebook, you know that I have actually done um, some posting about the MLK Memorial. I've actually uh, shared a video from uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, park and recreation workers on their thoughts on the MLK Memorial. And coming up this weekend, finally, after putting it off for so long, they're going to go ahead and do the dedication. Um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity. I start my mornings off by watching the news and um, listening to the Hollywood Hangout on GoGoRadio.com, cheap plug. Um, but this morning, they talked a lot about um, the MLK Memorial and how it's supposed to mean something to so many people. Um, let's just say for the sake of a great argument that, yeah, you're right. It, it is supposed to mean so much to a lot of people. But I want to come from another angle. And that angle that I want to come from is the angle that I live. Um, I was not, I was born in the 60s. And I remember but I don't remember um, my my peers before me um, going through the marches and the protesting and the picketing and, you know, the sit-ins and the lay-ins and all of those things. But when you go back and look at the history, you, you see the story. You got movies that depict exactly what happened. And I can't help but to think about society and life today in comparison to what they fought for. Um, one of the big questions is, and, and understand what I'm saying when I say this, I can only speak what I live, and that's black. I, I'm, I'm not a racist at all. Believe me, I'm not. But I can only speak from what it is that I live, and that's where I'm speaking from right now. And one of the bigger questions that has been asked a lot is, have we come further than where we were? I say no. And the reason why I say no is because there are so many things in place. There are so many designs that are set that no matter how much we want to believe that we have come far, we haven't really gone anywhere. We've digressed instead of progressed. And I'm keeping it real with you. Um, and a, a good example, you know, um, I've, I've done videos on my life of being unemployed and I'm still unemployed um, since one of those, since a couple of those videos, I have had the opportunity to do contracting. Um, but, you know, when you're doing contracting, you don't get paid what you worth. You get shortchanged. Um, you get placed in situations and environments where. Folks don't really respect you, and the agencies that you go through, they don't protect you. Um, I can mention agencies' names and stuff, and, I mean, I've done it before, and immediately after doing that, I've gotten phone calls with Sean, we want to come in and talk to you. And you get in there, and they talk to you, and they say, okay, we're going to squash everything, go ahead, make it straight, and try to hook you up, and you don't hear from them. They know who they are. I'm not even going to talk about them. But when you look at it, you know, from the shoes that I walk in and the life that I live. I have to say this for all who really don't want to believe it, for all who may be shy of actually believing it, and for those who are in complete denial, I'm going to tell you something. As a brother, as a black man, who by all accounts society says doesn't want to do anything, can't take care of their family, don't want to take care of their family. As a black man who does want to break that stereotype, I face more challenges than the cat that don't want to take care of his. 
And I don't think that that's fair. So have we progressed? No, we haven't progressed. You can sit here all day and say, well, we have resources and you can call here and you can go there and you can do this and you can do that. You know, but at the end of the day, you put out, ask any brother who's really trying to do it the right way, you end up putting out more than you actually do receive. I can speak from what I'm from what I'm living. Um, I, I have been in the IT field for 17 years now, 18 years now. And there isn't anything that I probably couldn't do. Networking is is my weaker of of all of it. But given the right situation, given the right opportunity, I am that cat that can come in and hit the ground running. That you all you have to do is ask the people who have called me for services, who are using my services now. Um, I'm well, I'm well rounded. You know, uh, I, I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Like I'm not just your average, open up the computer, replace memory, replace a hard drive, uninstall an application, run a virus protection program. I'm way much more than that. You know, um, I do web stuff. I'm not a pro at it, but I do it and I have an interest in it. So that makes it even better. As you can see, I do the video stuff. Um, and, and behind me, as you can see, I have a live streaming radio station on the Internet. And that's because I have a great interest in the field that I've been blessed to be in. Now, check this out. It doesn't matter. And this is just how I feel. It doesn't matter how much I try to push forward. Um... To, to make sure that I'm able to not just take care of myself, but also take care of my family. I run into more roadblocks because I'm trying to do what's right. Um, let me do wrong, and then any and everybody has a lot to say. I look at this memorial dedication, and I can only wonder who is under the false impression that after the memorial dedication it stops right there and everything is going to be okay because there are a lot of us like I had a conversation and I, I mean you know once again I'm just going to be bluntly honest um, we, we were talking about our people and the comment that I made was we are a people that are hopeless for hope we always throw hope in a sentence. You know, we have been hoping for years. And those of us who are in position to take that hope and make it a reality, we don't want to do that because we're fearful of losing. Um, and, I, and, I, and I feel like this, you know, Life is full of risk, and you're always going to lose something. I, I mean, it goes without saying. But what you have acquired and what you have is not just meant for you to keep to yourself. It's meant for you to share with other people. It's meant for you to help move your people forward. But we don't do that. Um, in the last two or three months, so to speak, I've had the opportunity to make some rounds and, and kick it with some people and hang out and see some things in action. And I open my mouth and say, yo, you know, I really wouldn't mind being a part of this. I think that I could bring something to the table to make it better. And I get, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, I'll get back to you. And so after hearing that for a while, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Um, taking matters into my own hands is doing the web hosting service, um, doing the web administration, having the radio station because I really do love music and, and I love doing what I do. But, you know, and, and, and what's so funny is I reach out to my folks. You know, I reach out to those cats who, who really want to make sure that their sound gets in people's ears and stuff like that and no one responds. Um, in a way, it's disheartening because here where I live at in the in the DMV area, 
you know, it's to me, I think it's oversaturated. I think everybody wants to be a star, but nobody really wants to put in the real work. And for those of us who genuinely do want to offer a service or an opportunity for somebody, because individuals have been jacked over by so many other people, they're reluctant to do that. And then again, I also think that they're afraid that if they actually do it, they really may become successful in what it is that they're trying to become successful in. So I look at that and I say, have we progressed or have we digressed? And I say that we digressed. Um, you look at a lot of the talk shows today. There are more women in the audience than there are men. And there are more topics that are related towards women than they are men. And people fail to realize that, you know, as a, as a, a brother that's actually trying to do what's good and what's right, we have a greater pressure than the cat that ain't doing right. See, the cat that's not doing right, he's already going to show up on the scene in that mode. You know, I don't even care what you say. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. In a way, I can kind of sort of understand where he's coming from. Like, in front of me right now on TV is this cat, Jeremy Kyle, and they just had a, a, a segment on there where there was a brother and a sister. The brother's a male stripper. The sister is his girlfriend with children. She don't want him to strip no more. He wants to strip, or basically he says that he's going to continue to strip because he's making money to take care of his family. This cat, Jeremy, I understand where he's coming from because, yeah, maybe you might want to pick a different profession, but in that brother's defense, if nobody's really trying to offer him an opportunity to do something different, then he is going to go with what he can do to make that money to help take care of that family. And I don't think anybody understands that particular strain or pressure that he's under. See, because he's trying to do right. And even though... It ain't, by society standards, it's not the right thing to do. It's something to do instead of having nothing to do. You won't get that until you sit down and actually sift through that because that's just what, what it comes down to. The same for me. You know, I've given my years to corporate America. I've given my years to private industry. And I will honestly say that if I think back over the years of all the jobs that I've had, there have been maybe two or three jobs where everything was beautiful. The environment was beautiful. The people were beautiful. Everything was just perfect. And if it hadn't have been a contract, if the companies had a did their business right, a brother would still be employed doing that. But it's not about me keeping the job. It's about the businesses making profits and stuff like that. And they don't really care what happens to you. After they let you go, that's it. You on your own. And so I look at all of the years that I put in and I say, well, instead of sitting here just rusting away, why not go ahead and do what you do for yourself? Here are my roadblocks. Credit. You know, my credit, my credit report shows that, you know, well, at least according to how they say it, my credit report shows that. I might be a risk, and so they won't invest in me. So I reach out to some of the people that I know that know people who have businesses, who started from nothing, who took the same walk that I'm taking right now to build a business, and I say, well, you know what? This is what I'm trying to do. Now, I don't know everything, and I do ask for help where I need it at. But some cats don't want to help you. They just want to take from you. And I'm just not down. I'm, I've reached a point where I'm just not down for that anymore because I have a right to be able to be as successful as the next man. The difference between me and the next man, if you ask anybody that I've ever, ever interacted with, is I actually do have a genuine heart, you know, and I do believe that what I've been blessed to be able to do is not meant for me to keep to myself. It is meant for me to share with somebody else. But in that process of being able to share with somebody else, there is a thing called man hours and there is a thing called justly and rightfully due compensation. And I should not have to ask anyone who I provide a service to for that. Now, if you've already stepped up to the plate, 
and answered that call, then you know that this don't even apply to you and you don't have anything to say. But if in the back of your mind I've reached out to you and you've gotten that hint that maybe a brother do need to be compensated, if not fully, just a little bit to keep things running, and you waiting for me to say it, then you did wrong and you know it. Um, I mean, I just, I just really don't think that we've progressed. I think we've gone back a lot. Um, there are a lot of pressures on both sides of the fence as it pertains to men and women. And I mean, all of this is designed, all of this stuff is designed to keep us separated and apart from each other, you know. And then when you got a sister who happens to not pick, well, I don't want to say pick, but who happens to associate or deal with a guy who does not give her what it is that she wants and she removes herself from that particular situation, she doesn't take time to heal. Or better yet, the information that she gathers in her in, in her transition is not the information that she really should have because she's already hurt. You know what I'm saying? And, and then she turns around and she gets out in society and she does this, I'm free, I'm going to do me, it's all about me. But she's not really healing herself. She's not really doing the get to know me because you've changed over the years. You've changed over the months. You know, you've been in a relationship. So a lot of things about you have changed and you need to kind of sort of familiarize yourself with those things that make up who you are, you know. Don't be so quick to turn around and jump out here and go to another guy because it's already been proven that the people that you have around you make up who you really are. So if there's things about yourself that you know you need to work on, then you need to work on those things so that you can become a better person and surround yourself with better people. It makes no sense to surround yourself with folks who don't have your mindset. When I say your mindset, I'm talking about maybe you aspire to be something, you know, whatever that is. Maybe you feel like, okay, this life for me is not the life that I need to live. So I need to try to, I, I want to do this and I want to go here and I want to be that and I want to go there. Well, you need to surround yourself with those people who are goal oriented like you are, because that's where your greatest source of inspiration comes from. Um, but when you surround yourself with people who have been hurt and haven't healed and don't know what healing is all about, and every time you turn around, there's always something wrong, they always got a problem, or they always picking the wrong person to deal with, you need to kind of sort of reevaluate that situation, and then you need to reevaluate yourself. Because like they say, misery does love company. And that's normally what happens, you know, while we're in our hurt. A lot of times we tend to magnetize people who who actually click, you know, attach to that emotion and they don't help us. Instead, what they do is they put a false image up and we think we OK, but we're not really OK. The same with the brothers. I mean, you know, it's so it's so like I said, it's such a two way street because the same things the sisters go through, brothers go through, too. But women's issues are so magnified that they don't see that a lot of us brothers actually do go through some of the same things. I mean, we want good women. We want women that support us. We want women that, you know, when, when we're going through, they can be our, our thing to lean on, you know, to keep us going. And just like women say, you know, good men are hard to find, men can say the same thing. But once again, when you look at it, we digress. We, we we tend to magnify all of those things that are wrong within our community, that are wrong within our race, and we don't capitalize on those things. I think one of the things that really, you know, vexes me is when you got cats who are established and they talk about the different resources and stuff like that that are out there. And then for the individual that goes out to go after those resources, you find out it's a lottery. You find out that you're not qualified for it. You find out that that's not actually the thing that's for you. Um, and you become discouraged and you become disappointed. The same with trying to find a job. Now, they say 
that X amount of hundreds of thousands of jobs have been created, but I've yet to get a hit or a phone call on any of those jobs that have been created. Instead, what I've gotten is phone calls from people who want to pay me $15, $16 an hour and expect me to give them my all when they know that I'm worth way much more than what they're trying to pay me. And at the end of the day, that particular pay is ate up because I got to eat. You know what I'm saying? Even if I take my lunch to work, I still got to pay for transportation to get to and from work. So who benefits in the long run? Not me. And I mean, you know, I... I I've gone over this one before. I think the memorial is definitely a tool that it, I, I think it's a piece that's long overdue, no doubt. But I also believe that it's a tool. It should be used as a tool to inspire our people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can't even sit at the table and agree that we disagree. And everybody wants to be somebody, but nobody wants to be who they are. For real, I was um, down at the uh, Taste of D.C. a couple weeks ago, and I had the opportunity to see the uh, Occupy Wall Street protesters. A few days later, I was listening to the news, and we had there was a politician who was speaking up on the Hill, and he referred to the protesters as mob. I don't get that. They were not mobs. These were people who were actually standing up for what they felt they needed to stand up for because they felt that those people who are in place and in position were not standing up for them. So how were they a mob? Now, you have a yearly function happening right next to the protesters. And I'll be honest with you, not one protester harassed or insulted anybody who was there at the event. Not one of them. Everything was peaceful. I think the only standout moment for me was there was a brother who happened to have a camera and a mic stuck in his face. And instead of actually addressing the issue on why he was down there or what made him come down to support the Occupy Wall Street protest, this brother wanted to get into the revolution. I don't know, but I was really turned off about that. And the big question that I had was, why is it there's always one militant peppered in the crowd talking about the revolution? I hate to be the one to say this, but the time that we had for the revolution has come and gone. Now it's time for an evolution. The evolution is real simple. You already know what you're dealing with. You already know what you're facing. You already know what the challenges are personally and on a social level. You have to try to make the adjustments that you, you know, in order for you to be able to, I don't want to say trick it, but not even blend in or fit in, but to be able to overcome those challenges. You have to evolve with it. You can't stay stuck on a 1960s model and think that this 1960 model is going to fit a 2011 society. It's not going to happen like that because no matter what you think, the things that our folks in the 60s and the 50s were, were protesting and fighting for, it's become a whole nother level of the same thing. And I mean, most most folks like um, Allison Seymour, you know, I I really enjoy when they do those Ask Allison segments. And I have to give you your props on that, you know, because you are very honest and I appreciate that. Um, the thing that you talked about today, for example, where um, the lady said that her child asked her about the KKK and it does it still exist. I'm going to have to give you credit where you say that we should continue, excuse me, to teach our children and let them know that there are good people out here. But I also disagree with you because even though we may want to believe that maybe racism isn't alive today, racism is alive and it's stronger than ever. But check this out. It's no longer a black white thing. It's a have have not thing. And that's a racism within itself. Let's talk about um, middle class. There are no longer middle class people anymore. 
there is poor, wannabe, and rich. And the people that want to be, believe me when I tell you, they are more racist towards both sides of the spectrum than the rich people are towards the poor people. See, the wannabes, they want to be rich and they don't want to be broke. That's the thing about it. The poor people, most poor people want to be rich because that's just the design. It's set up that way. A poor person sees all these people, these rich people around them, and they want to be rich. Now, here's the thing about being rich. Being rich, they want to be able to have people who want to accept them for just who they are and not what they have. So now you have a society that's not pleased with anything. So no matter what, everything is wrong. But the racism is a have-have-not situation. Because I don't have a job, those people that do have jobs don't want, they don't treat me as if I want to work. You know what I'm saying? Those people who do have money don't want to associate with me because I don't have any money. So there's a whole different level of racism. And I mean, we really do need to let our children know that yes, racism is still alive. And it is a have, have not thing because now our children want everything. And they want everything so that they can be accepted by those who already have it. You see what I'm saying? And because they don't have it, they're treated differently than the ones that do have it. So that's a racism, no matter what you say. Have we progressed? No, nah, we haven't progressed. We digressed. And the revolution is over. So now it's time for evolution. And the only way for us to evolve is we really do have to be truthful about the things that we see. Um, the, the, the discrimination against gays. I mean, you know what? If you gay, you know, that's you. That's you. Um, I'm not the one to sit here and preach to you and say, well, I'm a Christian and being gay is a sin. You're still a human being and I'm still supposed to show you love. As long as you don't step out of line, we good. I can't tell you how to live your life. You got to do what's best for you in order for you to be happy. You know, I'm, and, and then we can get into the folks that say that they're Christian and they treat everybody who doesn't say that I'm Christian differently because they do. As a matter of fact, the funny part, the funny part about being a Christian is they don't ever want to hear anybody else talk except themselves. Spiritual people will allow you to talk and they offer you spiritual advice. You see what I'm saying? Christian people won't listen to you. They'll hear you, but they won't listen to you. And then they turn around and respond to you by quoting Bible verses or tell you, you need to go to church or come visit their church or something to that nature. So there are a whole lot of different racisms out here. So we got to be honest about that. And with those, with realizing that there are a lot of different racisms out here still, and they're more advanced in different areas. It's no longer a color thing. Once we get to that point of accepting it, then we can start evolving and, and being able to overcome those specific challenges today. So in looking at this dedication that's coming up this weekend, one can only hope that in the midst of all of the talking that's going to be going on, someone addresses the fact that, yes, a lot of the stuff that Martin Luther King fought and died for, you know, it, it, it's still relevant and, 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 and alive today. And we have to take today's situation. Yeah, we can use the same vigor. We can use the same motivation. We can use the same uh, uh, inspirations to, to guide us and drive us to overcome these things. But the ideologies have changed a lot. And so we need to start addressing the evolution and not the revolution of this whole situation. That's just my two cents, you know. Um, there's plenty, I believe me, there's plenty more to say, but that's just my two cents. If you happen to go there, I really hope you enjoy yourself because it's a beautiful place. Um, and I guess that's it. So I'll be talking to you soon. Don't forget WSMCRadio.com. We got the music streaming. We got a whole lot of projects coming out. Big shouts out to my ShakespeareDog.com family. Big shouts out to my brothers from Hustle Nation. Big shouts out to my La Familia in San Diego, DJ Satchmo and his crew, and everybody that really has truly 
been supportive. The super admin Shawnee's big shouts out to her. Um, D Money, Renika, Bootsy Vegas, Hollywood, Tony, DJ Lucky, Will, all of y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all just don't know the small conversations that we have, you know, have really inspired me. Super producer Tree. I can't forget you, brother. There are certain people I've had conversations with that have truly inspired me and continue to keep me lifted through my own challenges. And so I just want you to know I appreciate y'all, you know, regardless. I appreciate y'all. And what we have has nothing to do with some of the other stuff that I've talked about because you all are straight and y'all know that. So um, take time out and marinate on that. Think about that. It's not a revolution. It's an evolution. Racism is still alive today. It's the haves versus the have-nots. And we got to try to get past all of these different racisms that are occurring in order for us to be able to evolve and overcome those challenges. With that being said, it's your man. I'm out.